What's good y'all? Welcome back to another video today on a wet and rainy California afternoon. Today we are finally making a update video on our 2021 Toyota 4Runner TRD Off-Road. This video might get a little talky and long because I'm gonna try to go through every single little detail and nook and cranny that we have done to this car. But if there's a specific mod that you are looking for information about, I'm gonna go ahead and add a mod list in the description with timestamps to where I talk about it in the video. So hopefully you could skip to that. So here's the truck, the car, the SUV, whatever you wanna call it. The last time you guys saw this thing was about two years ago where we dropped it off at Stellar Built in Sacramento, California. And then since then, you haven't really heard of anything from it. Nothing went wrong with the service. Nothing went wrong with the mods. The build actually was done just around the time we posted that video, but we got a little busy, didn't have a chance to edit a new video, shoot a new video with everything that we've done to it because it's kind of a lot. Sorry about that, but two years later, I'm gonna run you through everything. Also give you like a little bit of thoughts on the things that we did to it and how we feel about those mods and if we would recommend them to you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and start in the front of the car and kind of work our way back. And I'm also gonna try to explain why we went with certain mods and why they fit our use case. Obviously your use case is gonna be different, but the things that we put on this rig kind of works with what we wanted. So the first thing you'll see in the front is the C4 Fab Low Pro front bumper in steel a few reasons why we went with this one first one we didn't want to go with a full length steel bumper chop up the bumper and add a whole bunch of unnecessary weight we really just wanted the ability to mount some accessories to it as you see here which i'll mention in a little bit but also something a little trivial if you guys have ever seen the trd off-road premium front garnish front bumper front front valence that's what it's called uh it comes in this weird silver color that didn't really match the vibe of what we wanted on the rest of the car and at the time Time, there wasn't any good front valence blackout kits they were all pretty cheap we didn't want to paint ours and it to come out ugly so went with the c4 low pro front bumper i think it looks great it also provides new jacking points in the event you get stuck or need to do a roadside repair stuff like that so speaking of accessories we have these light bars are made by extreme leds this is just what stellar built had in stock and recommended to us honestly we don't use the light bars too too often so it didn't make sense to go with something like a rigid or baja designs something like that these are just rigged up with two oem style cali raise buttons in the cab i wouldn't recommend the cali raise buttons they don't really work kind of get stuck but eventually maybe we'll go over to an aux beam or some sort of switch solution like that so that's the bumper that's light bar also mounted to the bumper. Also behind the bumper, which you can kind of see in there, maybe you can see it better on this side. We have a Smitty Built X20, or maybe it's called the X20, 10K winch with a synthetic line, waterproof, and it could pull the car. It's not entirely necessary, but you know, it's good peace of mind. That is then ran through a Factor 55 Haas Fairlead and Factor 55 Ultra Hook Flat Link in blue. These are pretty sweet because you could pass a shackle straight through it, or you could use the normal clip. And then down below, you'll see the TRD skid plate. Some other little notes in the front. You'll also see the OEM Toyota hood garnish, as well as the Toyota blackout package, which we have on all of the badges. And then our Raptor lights and premium chrome stripe delete, which if you don't know the a lot of birds which if you don't know the trd off-road premium comes with a different grill than the trd pro so luckily recently they came out with a raptor light kit that fits with the premium grill which looks pretty slick that's one of the newer additions and then down here you'll see we have the diodynamics ss3 pro fog lights i couldn't recommend the diodynamic fog lights enough they're very good we use them all the time pros are a little bright for the road they are street legal but not gonna lie they're a little bright if you're driving around town you'll get high beamed and flashed all the time for people telling you to turn them off because they're being blinded in places like the mountains and the windy roads in the dark they really help and cars will actually get out of the way and come behind us and follow us through the roads because it helps them see so those are pretty sweet it's a really easy plug and play kit i think we made a video about it that i will attach right here and actually a majority of the simple mods that we did ourselves we have a playlist on the channel so you guys could navigate to that to our 2021 toyota 4runner overland playlist 
I think it's named something like that. You'll find it. Moving back a little bit now, you will see the next noticeable thing is the wheel tire setup and lift. The wheels here, we have Advan RGD2s in bronze. We have a video on these two if you want to see more. And for tires, we are running a 33 inch, which is a 285 BF Goodrich KO3 now. Originally it was the KO2, but I guess they've come out with the KO3s. It's pretty much the same tire. Slightly different tread pattern, but still just as quiet, just as smooth, grips just as well. We're a big fan of them. They're triple peak rated. One of the main things that we do with this truck is take it to the snow, take it to the mountains. Uh, we go snowboarding almost every other week, almost every week, pretty much every other week. So these have gotten us to and from very safely and we have never had any worries about not being able to navigate where we need to go. Back here, as you can see our lift, we have the Dobinson MRR Remote Reservoir lift kit. It's a three, three and a half kit. That has made it up to our SPC upper control arms. Uh, the Dobinson MRR kit is a great kit and it's an incredibly adjustable kit and it outperforms anything that we throw at it. Is the remote reservoirs necessary for the average consumer? Probably not. The average wheeler, probably not. There's a tendency to just set it and forget it because it performs very well. It's three-way adjustable, so I believe that's high speed, low speed compression, and, and rebound. So three-way adjustable. If you're doing a bunch of Baja stuff and then you're doing rock crawling and then you're doing some high speed stuff and then overlanding, you can kind of get settings that fit your needs for all three of those and just swap between them. Honestly, we kind of have them set just in the middle and it gives us exactly what we need and does exactly what we want it to do and we haven't found any need to really push the envelope in terms of settings. So they're a little overkill, but honestly, they ride great. Next up, pretty simple, don't even know if you call it a mod, are these AVS Low Pro Rain Guards. I think they look pretty slick compared to the normal OEM Rain Guards that kind of bubble out. These work really well. Like I said, we take this to the snow a lot. It also tends to get a little wet. It rains up there, so this is nice to let some fresh air in and not get the inside of the car wet while still looking pretty slick and not being too, too obnoxious in terms of look. Uh, moving back again, we have the wheels and then up here you'll see first our canopy, but probably the most controversial part about this entire build and also our most viewed video on the channel, which is if I step up here, the install of our TRD Pro roof rack. Now this one is controversial because a lot of people get very confused as to why we went with a TRD off-road rack and not something that's more popular on the market, like a full frame rack by say Prinsu or Gobi or Victory. And honestly, it just comes down to our needs. On a full frame rack, I think the main thing that people want it for is to mount different pieces of equipment to the top, mainly being something like a rooftop tent. In our case, we have no need for a rooftop tent. When we go out and take this car camping or off-roading or overlanding or whatever you want to call it, there's often four of us in the car, three of us in the car, and we got to pack tents in the trunk anyways. It doesn't really make sense just to give one person a tent up on the roof. It's kind of an inefficient use of space. Instead, we could get away with mounting stuff on the roof. So hopping back up here again, I can show you some of the, some of the things that we use to make the TRD Pro Rack fit our needs and hold the accessories that we need that we use the most. So first thing you'll notice is this basket in the middle that mounts to the sides. This is the Baja rack that fits for the TRD Pro rack. It fits right in the middle and gives us a little basket to fit all the things that we need. So in the summer, we have all this empty space here that we could actually put duffel bags, suitcases and stuff and actually ratchet strap it down, net it down. And it almost doubles our storage space as to what we could fit in the trunk. Next thing, as I mentioned earlier, we go snowboarding a lot. So we have these crossbar attachments or mock crossbar attachments that are specifically for the Baja rack that allow us to mount our Thule pinch racks and boom and boom, our snowboards could go right in and we could fit four snowboards up here back to back. Previously, with the OEM Toyota roof rack, these pinch racks sat down below around here because the OEM crossbar is at about this height. Now the issue with that was once we mounted a snowboard upside down, the bindings would hit the roof and actually rubbed away at the paint. That's why there's some ugly PPF down there. It was to stop some of the rubbing and also protect some of the paint. Now that's problem solved because the TRD Pro rack would mount the crossbars much higher than the OEM rack and we could put our snowboard racks here. 
Now in the winter, obviously these go up, but in the summer, these come out. We have our holder there for our water reservoir, which we can put a water tank up there that has a pressurizer and a nozzle where you can use it as a shower or even fresh drinking water storage with a spout. So that goes up there in the summer and these Thule pinch racks go away. We also have a Pelican case mounted up here, hard mounted. This has some recovery gear in it. We could put ropes and shackles in here. That Right now there's a bottle jack in here, but it's kind of good because you can put the stuff that you need to take with you, but don't always need all the time, such as recovery equipment. And it's kind of out of sight, out of the way, out of the trunk. So you could put other valuable cargo in the trunk, but still carry your recovery equipment with you. Honestly, that's just the middle part of the TRD Pro Rack, and you can see it fits a good amount of stuff for what fits our needs. So, so far, it has been one of the best decisions we've made. It also looks great, in my opinion. Looks really aggressive, kind of fits the vibe of the car as it is an OEM part. On that side, you'll notice we have our Max Tracks mounted to the side of the TRD Pro Rack. Obviously, they sell mounts for that. Find those online. And then on the side here, we have our ARB Touring canopy. This is the shorty canopy. Normally, they spend the length of the vehicle. We really didn't find a need for a long canopy. Honestly, we didn't find a need for a canopy in general. But that is actually a present from my old boss. Shout out to Josh hooked us up with this shorty canopy from his forerunner build after he moved over i believe he has a gx now we put it on here and honestly the shorty kind of works it doesn't look too obnoxious lengthwise and it comes out just enough to give you shade and actually coverage from snow and rain it actually worked when i went snowboarding with some of my friends we were able to stay dry while getting changed after snowboarding while it was still snowing out so that's actually been pretty helpful we could also pull it out and have little picnics um, it's pretty cool you use it every now and again now moving to the back you'll notice we have a fifth wheel we have a ladder we have a whole bunch of stuff back here so starting with the fifth wheel we have our other rgd2 on a ko2 uh, we didn't want to get a fifth replacement since this was never worn down anyways and it's still a full-size spare so it'll work if we need a spare still you can see that is mounted to a rigged swing arm which i will open up for you real quick you just undo this lever and come over to the other side where there's normally a lanyard holding on the pin but i think it just broke last night whoops pull this pin out and the swing arm just comes open like so not hitting my corolla the rig swing arm works incredibly well it comes with a built-in table and cutting board which i don't think we've ever used a cutting board comes with a table here you never realize how handy a table attached to your car is until you have a table attached to your car we've used this for cooking with a little flat stove we've used this just to lay your gear out before you go mountain biking or snowboarding or whatever you do we've even used it for just holding tools while we're working on the car it does a little bit of everything all right it's pouring it's pouring rain out now but i gotta finish the video table cool also have a shovel with these i think they're soch mounts scotch mounts something like that high lift jack with plate relocation kit high lift jack is there it mounts directly to the ultra swing cool let's go inside and we could do interior that way it's dry sorry about that sorry about that guys uh got interrupted by the rain um another note about something cool that the TRD Pro Rack does is it still lets us use the sunroof. A full frame rack, yes, you can still use a sunroof, but typically there's a couple extra bars here that cover it. This still lets full range of motion, lets you open it, close it, and still have an open air experience, and still use a sunroof to your full advantage that you paid for. We like the sunroof. I know a lot of people don't really care about the sunroof, but we personally like it. All right, in the interior. Again, another little badge blackout here. Blacked out TRD shift knob. I think this is like one of the first things we ever did to the car. For whatever reason, Toyota made the TRD premium interior all black. You have nice like metallic black inserts on everything. Uh, faux carbon fiber that honestly looks pretty good, but everything is dark and black except for they made the stock shift knob this weird silver metallic color that didn't match anything in the interior so one of the first things we did was change it out to the black one the oem one is quite comfortable it works really well and stuff like the glove box we have dividers to stop stuff from rolling around a bunch here too i believe we have a short little video on that 
phone mount. This is the Soch or Scoach or Soch. I don't know how you pronounce it. Magic mount. It uses a little bit of 3M and has a right angle ball joint on the back. This allows you to easily mount your phone with a magnet right on there. I think it's a much cleaner solution than having one of those janky suction cup mounts or doesn't take up any window space. It's there out of the way. And you could still plug in your phone right into it for Apple CarPlay. And yeah, in terms of interior, that's pretty much it. Nothing too crazy. Normally, I would like to put a Broadway wide angle mirror right here, especially because, especially because the fifth wheel tends to take up some of the rear visibility. A wide angle mirror would help that a lot. But the 4Runner came with this auto dimming mirror that is honestly really nice for driving at night. And it felt like kind of a ways to just stick a cheap $15 Japanese plastic mirror over it when you have this nice auto dimming mirror. Besides that, interior is for the most part stock. We've just got this nice soft text that the 4Runner comes with. It's washable, it's comfortable, it's heated. Also, the back seats, if you don't know, if you're still trying to figure out if you wanna buy a 4Runner or not, buy it simply for the back seats. Your passengers will love you. The back seats of a 4Runner recline more than any back seats I've ever felt in any other car. And you fall asleep within 15 minutes of a road trip with those. And it's nice and spacious back there. Lots of leg room. We've got all season mats. I want to say that the TRD off-road comes with that, but don't quote me on that. All right, moving into the trunk. By the way, Gobi ladder. That's there. You got to splurge on a little bit of overland rice every now and again, right? Like even if you don't need to climb on a ladder to get to your roof, you could use the wheel or the running boards or the sliders. It looks cool, right? You know, it's cool. Uh, moving back here, I don't have much, but I do want to show off some of the little accessories we have and also explain some of the accessories that are not in the car right now. In here, we have our winch controller and all the stuff that the winch needs. The winch controller is wireless, but there's also a hard wire that you could plug in under the hood to get to the winch to control it from here. Behind that is our IFAC first aid kit. Jumper cables there. There is a jump pack there. This will do most of the job. This will jump 75, 80% of cars, but jumper cables there as a redundant solution. And then obviously it's winter. So we have a snow scraper and snow brush right there couple stools back there for sitting and chilling and a little tool bag with hand tools in it. Also, we have a handful of accessories that aren't in the car right now. We have a little folding table by GCI, folding picnic table. We also have a Morflate and we have a trash room trash bag that attaches to the ladder. It hooks on there. Pack in, pack out, take care of the environment, stuff like that. So I guess the ladder isn't entirely useless. Um, but yeah, trash room is a really good one to have. And then also what I don't have with me is our radios. Right now we're using the Baofeng UV 5G GMRS radio just for spotting and trail work. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope I didn't miss anything. If I did, please leave a comment. Or if there's anything you want me to go more in depth or in detail about, go ahead, drop a comment. I could either respond to you or if it's big enough that I missed that's worth making a video, I can go ahead and do that. Hopefully new videos can come soon. Apologies, we kind of got cut off by the rain, but hopefully I covered enough to where you guys kind of get a feel for what we did to the truck, why we did it. And if you guys want to do it yourself, feel free. Hopefully this has helped you out a little bit choosing your mods on your 4Runner. Or if you just wanted a video to watch, hope you enjoyed it too. So anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you guys next time. Peace.